I mean, I don't mean to laugh, but it's, it, I find this hysterical, absolutely hysterical. All right, listen to this. Heat energy is the energy that's in volcanoes, it's in ice. Right? Heat energy is all around us. <laughs> volcanoes, ice, all matter contains heat energy. Okay, I'll go with that. But what is it? Well, here, actually, heat energy is all around us and all these things. All matter contains heat energy. Heat energy is the result of the movement now of tiny particles called atoms in, in molecules in the ions, solids, liquids, gases. They all flap inside. <laughs> heat energy can be transferred from one object to another. The transfer or flow due to the difference in temperature between the two objects is called heat. What flows? What flows? For example, then they, they, all right, let's just go with what they say. For example, an ice cube has heat energy and so does a glass of lemonade. If you put the ice in the lemonade, the lemonade, <laughs> oh, man, which is warmer, will transfer some of its heat energy to the ice. Wow. In other words, it will heat up the ice. The ice will treat. Well, let me just let's, let let me let them make their statements. Eventually, the ice will melt, and the lemonade and water from the ice will be the same temperature. This is known as reaching reaching a state of thermal equilibrium. I mean, so far we're pretty good. I'm sorry. I I I, I just can't help myself. Every day it's it's worse. All right, matters all around us and everything in the universe. Anything that has both mass and volume and takes up space is matter. I'll go with that. Matter exists in different physical forms, solid, liquid, and gases. Go with that. All matter is made of tiny particles called atoms, molecules, and ions. I'll go with that. These tiny particles are always in motion. I will go with that. They're either bumping into each other or vibrating back and forth. I, I can accept that. It is the motion of particles that creates a form of energy called heat. No, it is not. Absolutely not. It is forcing electrons into other electrons and pushing them in. It's light crushing into something. It's, it's electrical energy. Um, it is molecules breaking down and liberating electrons. It is the flow of electrons. It's not flappy waves. The motion of the particles. They think that when something expands, it's just because they're all flapping around in there. Nothing's added. <laughs> it's just flapping. They didn't add any electrons. That's insanity. Absolute total insanity. And that is what they teach today in schools. They teach you that there is no particles. There's no particles moving. Light isn't a particle. Einstein literally destroyed physics, absolutely destroyed it for at least a hundred years, and I don't know how much longer it's going to go on. Light is a particle. Case closed. It is electricity. It is heat. It is a free, pushing, crushing particle. When it pushes into something, it is heat. When it is removed, it is cold. Okay, my friends, I, for the millionth time, this is light. That is just normal light. That's accelerated light. We end up seeing the particle. They create Higgs fields after Cherry Yankoff radiation. We can see a new particle created. These are the photons. This is the way the photons move through space. And they are particles. Now, which means, and you say, oh, well, what does light have to do with, with heat? Well, it, it's, it, light is heat. There is nothing nothing there is zero that is not that right there electrons and these electrons you see that if you can see that there's back-to-back -back electrons right and here they are right here and that's from a red laser light it's accelerated and slowing down you're never going to see this except for the accelerator caused them to be displayed and here's what happens this is what an electron looks like. And I can show this, and I have actually found the gauge bosons. And what is a gauge boson? Well, a gauge boson is a carrier. It has really no 
no energy to speak of other than it carries energy and that's what that is right there and it carries that which is the energy and I'm going to explain this in great detail uno momento two electrons together is a photon a 1837 photon, uh, pro electrons ends up being a stable construction like this called a proton. Well, they're not really protons and they're not really neutrons. They're just masses of particles that achieve a stability at that number. They shake and they go flying everywhere and then all of a sudden beep, they lock in at that number. At that number, they have some kind of geometry that allows them to be touching each other and holding on to each other and stable. I don't know that much about that part. I do know somebody has have to have a supercomputer to say, how do these dipoles interact all in an instant and then all of a sudden lock in? Something could figure that out, I'm sure. Because all it is is, is zones of stability between every one of these particles. These are all different called atoms. These are the atomic particles. They're the elements. But between every one of these elements, there's thousands of little particles, thousands of those. And what happens as they change and, and add to each other and construct molecules, they step down through these different transitions. That's what they're seeing with isotopes. They're not just particles that every now and then they sort of hang around there, but they decay real quick. No, they're transition phases where if you could, oxygen comes over, grabs a couple of electrons, this throws a couple over here, then something comes over there and grabs a few, and this adds a few, and, then go, and before long you've got some kind of C6H1206, <laughs> which is sugar, glucose. All right, but, it's, but in the beginning, you got some carbon, you got some oxygen, you got some hydrogen, you got some of this, you got some of that, and, brrr, and all of a sudden you got sugar. All right, now, let's talk about heat. But in the process of doing all this, you, you create heat. That is, it's a liberation of electrons. And how do they liberate? Light liberates them, and how does it do that? It stimulates a particle, a, a mass, so violently that they just go flying off. Zip, and it smashes into something. It's light. And that, when it hits something, it's heat. You know that you get heated up when you sit out in the sunshine, and you get light on you. You shine light in water, it warms up the water. Light is, 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 is electricity. Light is an electron. Electricity is, is electrons. That is pushing electron into electron, because every single thing there is is coated with electrons. That's what heat is. It's the movement and flow of electrons and then they take up a space so if it's inside of a a can and you heat it up too much there'll be so many electrons will go in there and the thing will explode they don't just flap around in there and they just flap so hard that they want to explode no they are forcing electrons in pow that's what's happened all right now that you got the good idea of what i'm talking about these this is what happens with light. If you could see what was inside of light, and you can right now, it's that particle. And because we accelerated this wave over here, which would never show its particle. It's just showing a little glow because the whole thing now is concussing with all of this that's in front of it. The particle's right here, but it owns a region that is like a basketball. I mean, I'm serious. These things come through the air, and they own absolutely incredible regions. That's why the air concusses and glows. That's why, why all the air in here is glowing. Now, what is that? That's the particle. We accelerate it because it's a venturi. These particles are stacking up on themselves. I think I can create fusion with this. I'm almost certain this is, can, can happen. Now, it comes through here, and I'm going to show you the Bose... Um, the gauge bosons that are in there, which are the carriers, and they carry, they're the black ones, and then the white ones are the, are the exploders. And here's the proof of that. Now, I've seen this hundreds of times. I'm not going to beat the dead horse. This is the, the charge part. These dots are the, the um, gauge bosons. They are the carrier particles. All right, they come back together out here. They end up all coming back to their normal 
both sides, they come back to this. All right, so this is charge separation. If you can charge separate, in my world, that says you can do fusion. And if anybody can, 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 can fight that, I want to hear it. But nobody will address this. And if you can do this and charge separate, when they come back together, you, they should come back together in their least, their least energetic state, which means you're going to release all kinds of energy. And then we just take it. I don't know what to say. Nobody cares, nobody cares about anything other than what they have invested their reputation in. And if you change any little bit of their piece, they don't want to know about it. Stay away from me. So, here I am, out in the woods, talking about something that could be a, actually help the world. Nobody cares. 